Well, I've done it again. I have uh, convinced a friend to watch a terrible movie with me, uh, luring him in with some money. Uh, I don't know if you saw my last video where I forced Joshua to watch Trolls World Tour. This time we're watching something probably worse. Yubi's Halloween. Halloween's your partner! Joshua, we're here again. Look at us. Lucky us. So, uh, let's, uh, we're going to watch, so, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, Adam Sandler, when he wasn't nominated for Uncut Gems for Best Actor, said he was going to make the worst film of all time. This is that film. Are you excited? No. Um, I have seen three seconds of the trailer. So because yeah, you that's told the thing me. I told you not to watch the trailer, not no. to watch it. But it was one of those things that like YouTube does that they start like a trailer beforehand. That's what happened with you is you start watching, you're like, what the fuck is this? And then once you realize you shut it off, which thank you. Yeah, of course. But I think most importantly, I saw those three seconds and I thought, oh, this doesn't look bad. Uh, and then I realized what it was and I was like, oh, I've heard awful things yeah. about the full trailer. Let me shut this off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's just get into the fact that like Adam Sandler, I think, makes two types of films. Movies where you go, oh, wow, Adam Sandler is great. And movies where you go, fucking Adam Sandler. And those are the only, there's no in-between. There's never a film where I can, you know what? I'll take that back. I feel like Click is the only exception to the Adam Sandler. Oh my God, it's Adam Sandler rule. And that's not including his 90s film, because his 90s films, I was a kid. I feel like if I was an adult watching Happy Gilmore, I would fucking go like, what is this? You know? Or like, yeah. really, I don't I like a, Mr. Deeds as an adult. Yeah. I, see, I haven't seen Mr. Deeds as all. I only watched it a ton as a kid. But, like, I have seen Billy Madison as an adult, and it's a nostalgia thing where I'm like, oh, man, I fucking love this movie. But just just watch. There's some things where I'm just like, oh, my God, he just kind of plays that character. If you hate it here, if you hate it here, if you hate it here. You know what's a movie I never liked because I saw it as an adult? Little Nicky. That's odd for you because that movie is so camp. It, it it just it's such a bad but it's a bad movie. But like Waterboy, it I is. fucking love Waterboy. I don't think I haven't seen Waterboy since I was like fucking twelve. You know. Okay, what are you drinking? This full disclosure, I'm a little drunk. So aside from the Adam Sandler stuff, there should be a scale of, of like Halloween comedies. You know, I feel like the bottom for me for me. Bottom of that list is, um, I don't know, what's a bad Halloween comedy? I feel like like Ernest Scared Straight, right? And then if you're in the middle, for me, it's like a Hocus Pocus. But if you're in number 10, a Halloween Town, all right? I am with you on Halloween Town. Yeah. So strongly. Yeah, Halloween Town's fantastic. It is one of, if not the best... Disney Channel movie of all time. Um, I have not seen Hocus Pocus. Neither have I. I've seen clips, and I really hated the clips I saw. I will say, as two queer men, it's insane that we haven't seen Hocus Pocus because it's so ingrained in our Halloween uh, experience, you know? Yeah, but is it homophobic of us? Maybe. I want to grade this on a scale. One being Ernest Scared Straight, 10 being Halloween Town, where we would put this on the fun, family-friendly Halloween movies. Where does Nightmare Before Christmas fall for you? Uh, in the trash. It's a fucking garbage movie. I don't care if someone right now is yelling at me. Oh, no, it's not. Look me in the eyes. And if you fucking, if you cut away from the video, you're a coward. Look me in the eyes. It's not good. Anyway, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> oh god i kind of uh, yeah you know what i think it's even funnier if i leave it in but set like beep the name so it's gonna be like one of our mutual friends going like oh, i wonder who that is yeah anyway um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna censor the second one ready mm -hmm. look at me joshua ready as i'll ever be look at me all right i let me pull it up <laughs> <laughs> look at me all right yeah, i know, I know. that's up. a bit funny thing <laughs> I don't want your partner! He's doing the voice. Hubie, we in H. 
Thoughts. Why did he have to be mentally handicapped? Oh, yeah. That was something you brought up before we started, uh, before we watched the film. Uh, you brought up the fact that uh, so often does Adam Sandler play like a mentally handicapped person for laughs. Mm-hmm. And this is a character who is clearly mentally handicapped. And um, I feel I like. I do think they answer that question. What do you, in what, why? I think they answer it. Um, he's mentally handicapped because the movie is a message about being nice to the mentally handicapped. We're out of food, I guess, yeah? Because they're nice people. You yeah, shouldn't but there's a difference them. of being not bullying one and then making him mayor. He becomes mayor at the end of the film. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Uh, but the fact that he becomes mayor, there's some things, there's some... First off... Um, they only go a year into the future, which means that November. So this is October thirty first. That November, he would have had a he would have had to have been elected mayor, which means his entire campaign runs the span of or George ended, Wallace died or George Wallace died. Oh, you know what? Maybe and he George inherited it. I like. Well, they, they, I don't think he inherits it, but they have to. They hold a special election. <laughs> there, there are two big returning characters the first one is ben stiller at the beginning plays the same character he does in happy gilmore um which i love so this is in the gilmore verse the uh, happy madison verse yes you know that this takes place in the same universe as all his other movies and the other big one for me which i lost my mind at is apparently it's canon that this character is canteen boy from the snl sketch i'm sorry canteen boy my my beard is scratchy, isn't it? No harm done. I tried to find it online, but I can't find the full sketch online. Um, I have it on DVD because it's in the Adam Sandler Best Of. Um, I've never heard of this character. So, Joshua, this character's entire joke, the entire joke of this character, the, like the big one, the famous one that, like he did it a few times, but the one that's famous is the one with Alec Baldwin. And the whole joke is he's being molested by his scout leader. Remember that part where he does the scout salute in the movie? Yeah. No, literally, like, I, I was talking about this uh, recently with a friend because I used to love this sketch so much. Which, Ooh, your beard is, my beard is scratchy, canteen boy. <laughs> Must have been a bed bug. <laughs> that was pretty big for a bed bug. <laughs> okay, it wasn't a bed bug. Let's go back to saying it was a bed bug. <laughs> <sighs> I don't like that you're judging me with your face right now. Well, I w- <clears throat> I'm judging the sketch. Yes. But you're laughing even while you're, while you're retelling this sketch. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed this sketch. I'm flashing back to when we saw the SNL that he was recently on, and he did that Weekend Update character. Uh, and you told me how much you loved it, and you put on some classic Adam Sandler doing that character. Yeah. And we just sat there for like two minutes being really uncomfortable as they made a ton of jokes. That are not okay. Yeah, a ton of jokes about like rape and Monica Lewinsky and shit like that and gay people. And we were just like. This is, I guess, I guess this is a more progressive version of those sketches, like this movie. But mm-hmm. it's still like the jokes are just so dated and old that it's insane that like it's still allowed, you know? Like Ridiculous Six was also like that. Like I saw Ridiculous Six, and it's just so racist the whole time. Where I'm like, I can't believe he made this movie in 2016, and this movie feels like it was made in '94. And even for '94, this is too racist, you know? I'm peeing now. 
<laughs> it's his favorite holiday, but he's terrified of everything. So I think this is excusable. Okay. Because there's that part where he talks to his mom and mentions the fact that he doesn't get any other holidays because he's Jewish. And he mentions Christmas, Easter, Ash Wednesday. Oh, okay. That's funny. Um, but I, there are other holidays, Huey. Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day? Arbor Day? Could have been, this could have been Huey Arbor. So there was a joke that the nun said. This is after a scene where the mom from Modern Family drives away after having a conversation with Huey. And the nun walks up behind him. And she says, I'm asexual. But that girl's making me hella horny. Mm. And that's it. And that just felt so... Out of place. Out of place. For asexuality, yeah. possibly the first non-rapey context of an LGBTQIA character in an Adam Sandler movie. To be a nun saying she's asexual, but Valentine makes her horny. I, I also don't think Adam Sandler and the people who wrote this movie know what an asexual person is. That's true, but that's also why I'm so shocked that they bothered. They were, like they were just like they were just like they were like, what's a buzzword? Asexual. It also it could have easily just been I'm a nun or I'm celibate, but she makes me horny. Yeah. But yeah, it's like you said, they were like, What's what's hip with the kids? Oh, asexual. Okay. What's what do we know about asexuals? They don't fuck. But what they, but they probably get horny. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, in some cases, it's, it's kind of a, it's a spectrum. So anyway, um, <laughs> let's wrap, let's bring this one home, shall we, Daddy? On the scale of yeah. Ernest, scared, stupid, to Halloween Town, Ernest being the low, Halloween Bound being the high, I don't have to tell you, where is this film? Hocus Pocus being in the middle? Hocus Pocus being in the middle. Granted, both of us have not really seen Hocus Pocus. Yeah. But, but also, but, I, mean, I get it. But you made a good point, which is if they take a lot of the big, raunchy stuff out of here, this would be a great kids' film. Yeah. And honestly, because of that, I'm putting it above Hocus Pocus. Wow, really? I'm putting it like a. That's like a. A 5.6. A 5.6, which would be what? What would that be? That would be like a. Like that a would wall- be a. A Halloween Town three. Oh, you bitch! Halloween Town High, I believe it's called. Yeah, I didn't like that one. No, I didn't either. But it's better than Halloween Town two. No, Calabar's Revenge was trash. Calabar's Revenge. They redid. Hey, they completely redid the town square. They didn't film in St. Helens. They made some fucking giant like statue of a cube with a face on it. Calabar's son. It's a decent plot, but the setting was completely ruined by filming somewhere else and doing a different scene dressing. Everyone, that was Yubi's Halloween. Yubi's Halloween, right? Yeah. Is it? Are you mad about Halloween Town too? The second one doesn't make any sense. Okay. Spooky, scary, scary. This was my hundredth film. Was I try to watch a hundred movies a year, like for new movies, and this one was number one hundred. <laughs>